Good morning and welcome in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. O Lord, increase our faith, but remind us of where the increase is. The increase is with him. As our faith increases, so does our work increase, so does our duty to fulfill that work with the strength of Christ. Tis our delight for all he has done for us. Today we follow the service of the word from our 93 hymnal, which has been printed in your worship folder. And we begin with our first hymn, 780, O Splendor of God's Glory Bright. As you are comfortable and able, please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who 
take refuge in him. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues forever. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your bountiful goodness, keep us safe from every evil of body and soul. Make us ready with cheerful hearts to do whatever pleases you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. congregation may be seated and at this time I invite for the children of the congregation for the children's message. All right. How is everyone today? Good? I have some pictures for you today, starting with this one. <clears throat> what is happening in this picture? What is happening in this picture? Go ahead, Logan. Go ahead. Boy, you said that with some sort, some disdain under your breath. He's cleaning his room. Yes, yes, we've all done that before. He's cleaning his room. What is this young lady doing, Eli? Washing the dishes, yes. And then what is this person doing? What is this person doing? Yeah. <laughs> or the ceiling, right? Yeah. He's reaching all the way up in the corner, getting the cobwebs with, with, the dust, with the feather duster there, doing a good job. Hopefully he's on a safe chair, or maybe his dad has got him uh, on his shoulders, and he's, he's helping out. Have you ever done anything like these pictures before? Do you have your own chores at home? And, of course, you have your own room to keep clean. <laughs> I'm getting smiles. You have your own room to keep clean. Why do you try and keep it clean? Well, it looks nicer. Who might have told you to keep it clean? Your mom and dad. Well, we, moms and dads gives, give us those jobs so that we can prove that we are trustworthy. We, they know we have the ability to keep the gift of a room clean so that we can sleep and, and do other activities and do our homework and so forth. And they might give you other jobs, or here's something, you might volunteer to do other jobs around the house and around the yard. And why might you volunteer to do that? What do you, if you do a specific, well, money, okay. But other than money, yeah, we know what gets you motivated around here. Uh, <laughs> But other than money, what if you help out around the house, what does that make more time for? Have you ever thought of that? If you help out by cleaning your room, more time for fun. More time for fun for you, and who else? Your mom. You mean that if you do what your mother and father ask you to do, and the chores that they assign you, there's more time for fun later, and they can have fun with you? Wow, wow. Now, when we, do, when we do the chores that we're assigned or when we do something on our own without being asked, what does that show mom and dad? We're respectful of them. And what else does it show? Eli. That we love them. We love mom and dad. And of course, anytime that we 
that we do those things, who else do we love? We show love to our mothers and our fathers, but who else do we love? Jesus, we show our love to God by serving him and by serving our mother and father. Now, there are all different ways to serve. If you were to ask the people who, who, are, uh, who have jobs, who go to work Monday through Friday or whatever the situation may be, they have jobs that serve other people and they try and do the best that they can. I have a job that serves other people. So you can serve like a police officer or a firefighter in that way. You can also serve in church. You can help around church. You can put the numbers up, fold the bulletins, clean the pews, whatever is necessary. And all of that shows love, shows love to God by serving him. Now, why do you suppose that we would want to serve God, either at home, at work, at school, or at church? Why would we, why would we want to serve God? He sacrificed his only son to save us from our sins. He did the most important work possible, and he put faith in our hearts that's attached to our Savior so that we have all of the rewards of being his child. Sin is forgiven, a heavenly home, and peace as we go about our work. And we can go about our work joyfully, whatever it is. And then there's one most important work, that kind of is a part of all of our other work. What, what might we get, to the ch get the chance to do or remind people of as we serve them in love, as we show love to God? What might we be able to tell them? The word, specifically that Jesus is our Savior and we serve him because we want to serve him and we want to serve others because we want to serve others because of all the love that he has been shown. And you're going to see that and hear that in the Bible readings today, how people were moved um, through faith to do uh, great things, good things, because they loved God. And also in your story, uh, in the kids' corner, you're going to hear of a servant girl who was a servant, a slave of, uh, of a Ninevite by the name of or excuse me, a Syrian by the name of Naaman. And she is going to tell uh, Naaman's wife some very important information. She's going to be a witness for God, even in, her, even in her servant position in the household. She is going to do something very important for him. And you can do things that are very important for God just by serving where you are, serving with love for one another and for God in everything that you do. Okay, thank you for coming up. Be sure to grab the activities and go back to your moms and dads. Joyful service is prompted by all that God has done for us. And yet we only say, we only say that we are thoroughly equipped by God himself to simply do our duty, to do the things that we were created to do, for we are God's handiwork, that we should walk in the good works that he has prepared for us to do. We see the joyful heart of King David preparing uh, gifts for the temple to be built by his son Solomon from 1 Chronicles chapter 29. King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The work is great because this citadel is not for a man. It is for the Lord God. According to all my strength, I have provided these things for the house of my God. Gold for the gold items, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, wood for the wooden, onyx stones and settings, antimony, stones of many different colors, every kind of precious stone, and alabaster in abundance. David, David blessed the Lord in the presence of the entire assembly. He said, Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel, 
our Father from eternity to eternity. To you, O Lord, belong greatness, power, glory, victory, and majesty, because everything in the heavens and on the earth belongs to you. You, Lord, are exalted as head above everything. The kingdom belongs to you. Riches and honor come from you. You are ruling over everything. In your hand are power and strength. It is your power to make anyone great and strong. Now, our God, we are thanking you and praising your glorious name. Who am I? Who are my people that we are able to offer willingly like this? For everything comes from you. What we have given to you came from your hand. We are aliens and temporary residents before you, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are like a shadow, and there is no hope of staying. Lord, our God, all this abundance which we have provided for building a house for you, for your holy name, is from your hand. This abundance belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and you take pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart, I have freely offered all these things. Now with joy, I see your people who are present here to bring the offering freely to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, preserve forever this purpose and way of thinking in the heart of your people. Direct their heart to you. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 62 from our 93 hymnal. It has been printed for you and we sing it together. Our second lesson now from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul boasts in the faith that has been given to the church in Thessalonica that they may again pursue every good work under the Lord's gracious hand. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are always obligated to thank God for you, brothers, as is fitting, because your faith is growing more and more, 
And the love that each and every one of you has for one another is increasing. So we ourselves boast about you in God's churches in regard to your patient endurance and faith in all your persecutions and in the trials that you are enduring. This is evidence of God's righteous verdict that resulted in your being counted worthy of God's kingdom for which you also suffer. For this reason, we are always praying for you, that our God will make you worthy of your calling and use his power to fulfill every good desire and work of your faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, in keeping with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God. Please stand. Alleluia, who am I? Who are my people that we are able to offer willingly like this? Alleluia. gospel appointed for this day from the gospel of Luke chapter 17. Jesus said to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for that person if a millstone would be hung around his neck and he would be thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, Forgive him, even if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times returns to you and says, I repent, forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord said, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you could tell this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Which one of you? who has a servant plowing or taking care of sheep, will say to him when he comes in from the field, come at once and recline at the table. Won't the master tell him instead, prepare my supper, and after you are properly dressed, serve me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. He does not thank the servant because he did what he was commanded to do, does he? So also, you, when you have done... Uh, all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what we were supposed to do. The gospel of our Savior Jesus. Praise be to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated for their next hymn. Brothers, sisters, let us gladly 748.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The lesson for consideration today is the gospel lesson from Luke chapter 17. Dear friends, an employee who demonstrates diligence, hard work, and calm during stressful situations can find himself trusted with more responsibility and given authority. He's put in charge of a team or a department. He is expected to delegate various tasks and get things done by the deadline. And if he proves himself in this, well, he may still further climb the ladder of success, maybe even all the way to the top. Normally, normally, as authority and responsibility increase in our world, so do the benefits and the rewards of that authority and responsibility. And this is even true to some extent in the home. Even though a child's authority within the family does not increase per se, he or she, as they get older and respect their parents and follow the rules set before them, they will find that they will be trusted with more and given more time and more freedom as appropriate to do what they want to do. Increased responsibility means increased reward. Now in our gospel lesson for today, we hear the disciples ask for an increase. And we might think that increase will result in other increases according to the worldly pattern. However, we will find that this is not the case in Christ's kingdom. Still, we do not shy away from making the same request that those disciples did. We simply look to understand, understand properly what will increase when we say, when we ask, Lord, increase our faith. Now, Jesus transitions, if you may remember, from confronting the Pharisees over their problem of wealth and money, and he transitions to just now teaching his 12 disciples. And he teaches them about things with which they will struggle. He warns them, temptations to sin, are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for that person if a millstone would be hung around his neck and he would be thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Watch yourselves. Temptations will come in a sinful world. You can count on it. However, do not be the one through whom they come. Do not be the cause of any temptation. Remember who is watching you. Remember who is looking up to you. Little ones of faith. Little ones new to the faith. And when we hear that, those two words, little ones, our thoughts immediately go to our children. They are very new in their baptismal faith, aren't they? And you know as well as I do that they soak up things like a sponge. They copy the attitudes that they see. As the saying goes, attitudes are caught, not taught. So if the child, if the child sees and hears from the adults in their life, if, if he or she were to hear foul language coming from their mouths, if they were to see that 
people don't really treat each other with respect. They treat each other poorly. And if they don't go to church regularly, they are going to absorb those attitudes and behaviors. And they're going to be thinking to themselves, you know, it must be okay. It must be okay to talk like that. It must be okay to disrespect mommy or daddy. It must be okay. Church isn't that big of a deal because we only go once a month or very sparingly at that. It's the same with adults who are new to the Christian faith. Watch yourself. Don't be the cause of doubt. Don't cause them to doubt what they know by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, by your bad example. Even if you're doing something that is not sinful, be considerate of them and their conscience. Refrain from things that would cause questions in their hearts. Lovingly instruct them if at all possible. Otherwise, Otherwise, Jesus says, it's better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck. A millstone that was pushed around and around by a donkey, a beast of burden, to grind out all that wheat over and over and over again. It's better for one of those giant stones to be tied around your neck and for you to be thrown into the, into the sea rather than cause someone in faith to sin. Watch yourself. No one should be tempted to stumble because of your bad example. Be that good example of a Christian mother or father, brother or sister, teacher, pastor, church member or employee in whatever you do. Jesus also says, if your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times returns to you and says, I repent, forgive him. How many of you feel comfortable in correcting behavior or pointing out a, out a sin beyond those of your own children or grandchildren? How many would be comfortable in pointing out someone else's sin. Who likes to be confronted about their sin, even if it is Christian to Christian? The answer is no one likes to be confronted over their sin. And yet Jesus says, correct them, rebuke them, so that they are brought to repentance. And if they repent, forgive them. Forgive them, even if they come to you many times in the day and say, I repent, forgive them, even if it's seven times in that day. Or as Jesus says in answer to Peter's question in, in Matthew's gospel, Lord, how many times should we forgive, forgive our brother? Seven times? And Jesus replies, no, I tell you, not seven times, 70 times seven in other words, infinitely, infinitely forgive. There is no limit to it. Although sometimes, sometimes we wish there were or there should be. We want people to be hurt exactly the same way that we were hurt. We want them to suffer exactly the same way that we have suffered. You know, we talked a few weeks ago about that precious little phrase, I forgive you, and how powerful it is in our lives and how we should use it more often. And when you use it, what happens? Off comes the shame. Off comes the guilt. But we think, you know, what good is forgiveness if they keep doing the same thing over and over and over again? What if I want to hold on to my anger that's in my heart? What if I want to lord someone's sin over them that they have committed against me and never let them forget it and make them pay for a lifetime? 
That's justice. That's my justice. Watch yourself, the Savior says. Such are the inclinations of the sinful heart. A sinful heart does not want to forgive. A sinful heart does not want to point out other people's sins. A sinful heart does not want to correct its own behavior, even though it might lead people to sin. So now we have come to the same realization as those first 12 disciples. This is going to take a lot. This is going to take more strength and spiritual stamina than maybe we thought in the first place. So we say, Lord, increase our faith. And what does Jesus say? The Lord said, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you could tell this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. You could tell the trees, be they maple or buckeye, all the trees around the church property, all the pines, you you could tell them to move, and Jesus says they would obey you. Now, is that literally what happens? Is that literally the measure of faith in the heart? If you can go out and see, if you can uproot a tree? No. In fact, I think if we were able to measure the faith in your heart and in mine, I think we would be very disappointed in ourselves, wouldn't you? We would have thought there would have been more faith in our hearts than we found. We would have thought that our faith would have been stronger. Jesus' point is this. Faith's power does not come from its quantity. Ultimately, it's not our faith that does anything. It is the object of of our faith, the one in whom we put our faith in, the one who does the impossible. God does the impossible. He takes away every single one of your sins that you have ever committed and everyone else's by the sacrifice of his one and only son, Jesus, on the cross. He allows sinners to stand before him Innocent, pure, holy. He allows you to talk directly to him in prayer each and every day. These things, by all accounts, should be impossible for you to do. But they are made possible because God loves you. Even though at times, even though at times you face trial and temptation, even in times where your faith might be as small as a mustard seed and be shaking and and tremble. That doesn't mean that your Savior, that doesn't mean that your Savior has gotten any weaker. That doesn't mean that Jesus can't or that Jesus won't help you. He will. Jesus uprooted the sin from your very own heart and your very own life, and he destroyed it. He can do anything even uproot trees, should it be necessary. With faith, great or small, he enables you to act in that faith, no matter the size. He enables you to forgive others, just as he has forgiven you. He enables you to guard yourself against giving offense with your words and with your actions. He enables you to care to care not only for the spiritual well-being of yourself, but also care for the spiritual well-being of others. And then, then as your faith increases, and by God's grace it will, as it grows stronger and stronger and stronger by the gospel's power in the word and sacraments, as its hold on Jesus becomes tighter and tighter and tighter still, there will be more opportunities. As faith increases, opportunities will increase. 
opportunities for you to forgive, more opportunities for you to aid others in their walk of faith, and more opportunities to simply live as God wants you to live, as God has created you to live. That's the point of Jesus' short parable of the servant and his master. It's like, like a firefighter who rescues a dog from a burning building. And the owner says to him, thank you so much, you're a hero. And what does the firefighter say in reply? You're welcome, ma'am, but no thanks is necessary. I have only done my duty. You don't expect him to say something like, all right, ma'am. I rescued your pup, but before I give him to you, I want $500 cash. You wouldn't expect that from a firefighter. Firefighters shouldn't respect, expect any reward because it's his job. It's his job to rescue, and he's only doing what he is supposed to do. So it is with us. So it is with you. As you perform good works that are prompted by the faith in your heart, faith in Jesus. You can't go and say to God, all right, God, did you see what I did for my spouse today? Did you see the extra time I put into it? Look at what I did. Look at what I did for my parents. Look at what I did for all the neighbors this week because I had the extra time. I should get some reward for what I did. I deserve some kind of reward for what I did because I, because I already have too busy a schedule. You can't say that to God. Christians' actions aren't prompted by the thought of getting a reward. We don't expect anything in return. A Christian's acts of love are simply, simply part of being a follower of Jesus Christ. A Christian is just a servant of his Lord and Master. And he's simply doing what he is expected to do. And what a gracious and loving Master we, we serve. As we focus on him, as we are attached to him, the object of our faith. For it is by grace we have been saved through faith, and this not from ourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he has prepared in advance so that we may walk in them. That sums it all up, doesn't it? We delight in doing our duty. Faith delights in doing its duty because God has been so generous, so giving to us. Through faith, through that connection that we have been given to our almighty, all-powerful Savior, we have everything. He is our everything. He is our anchor, our anchor in times of perseverance, our strength in times of temptation, our champion in times of weakness. Salvation and heaven are yours because your faith delights in him. And therefore your faith will respond with delight, with loving acts of godly service, with its connection to Christ Jesus, Faith knows and faith testifies, I can do all things, all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he will strengthen you, just as he promises. May the Lord continue to increase your faith so that you are thoroughly equipped every day simply to do your duty. His is the power, his his the might, his the praise. Trust him and walk in the good works that he has prepared for you to do. For we are only doing what our Savior has done for us a million times over. To him be the glory. 
Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus, attached to him forever and ever. Amen. We confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We bow our heads and pray. O Jesus, our only Savior from sin, Keep us from building our hopes on this earthly life with its sins and sorrows, its shallow pleasures and its imperfect treasures. Lord, give each of us an earnest longing for that day when we shall be with you, which is far better. In the midst of the troubles and uncertainties of this life, let not our hearts be filled with fearfulness and anxiety, but give us a calm trust that calls on you for help in every time of need. Having placed all in your hands, ourselves, our troubles, our cares, our needs, our fears, our failures, our sins, our very futures, give us the strength and courage to go on and meet one by one the battles of life, never doubting you will make everything turn out for our good. Trusting in you, O Lord, we ask you to save us from all our foes who oppress us and from all things that afflict us. As long as we are earthbound, waiting for the blessed hour of our final redemption, supply us with the Holy Spirit and his grace, that we may adorn our life with good works, giving ample proof of our faith and of the love we have for you. While we journey here as pilgrims and strangers in a world hostile to you and our faith, guard and keep us safe from all evil that may threaten our bodies or souls. Keep us each step of the way, lest we yield to temptations. While of necessity we must be involved in earthly tasks and labors, let us not neglect our higher calling as laborers in our Heavenly Father's vineyard, proclaiming repentance and remission of sins to others. Take care of all our needs, but especially forgive our sins. Do not count them against us on that final day when all must appear before your throne of judgment. Grant that having trusted in you to the end, we will be found acceptable clothed in the righteousness that you have merited for us. In that day, give each of us a crown of glory to wear forever in heaven. Hear us, precious Savior. Amen. And we also pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It is at this time that I remind you to fill out the friendship registers located in your pews. And it is also at this time that I ask the offering to be brought forward as the congregation sings a familiar hymn from our 93 hymnal, or for a faith that will not shrink, the congregation may be seated.
Once more we stand and pray. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
morning. morning. Welcome once again to the Lord's house. A pleasure to have our guests with us. We are honored that you came to the Savior's feet with us, and we pray that application of his word may strengthen your connection with him, that he proves again to you that our Savior is everything. Our Savior is the power of everything that is in us and, and with us through that connection of faith. By way of announcement, we will have adult Bible class today. It is prepared for you, so please stick around as we continue looking at the Bible study, My Brother's Keeper, uh, rescuing, bringing back the lost and the straying that we haven't seen in a while. We've been enjoying our sessions together, and uh, still time for you to join us in that. Uh, no evening worship, but pleased to see a lot of Mondayers here. Uh, no Monday worship tomorrow. The pastors will be in Manistee. I'll be leading this afternoon with Pastor Rich and be back uh, returning sometime, I would think, Tuesday, hopefully around 5 o'clock. Usually if we have a big distance to overcome, we tend to move mas rapido through that second day so we can get on the road, so we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then the bookmarks that you received in your bulletins, ladies, especially for you, bring yourselves, bring friends, as we, as we will have the fall rally here with us in just a couple weeks. Sign-ups for... Uh, doing this or that, uh, providing for the, for the luncheon uh, in the middle of, of the rally is on the bulletin board there. We hope that you can come. We hope that you can bring a friend. Uh, it is a great time of encouragement uh, to be had with your sisters in Christ. And then also, lastly, uh, don't forget, uh, gentlemen, next week will be our voters meeting, and the agenda is, a ta is uh, in yellow there on the bulletin board for you to uh, look over. Lots of things to approve and or discuss and or just pass along uh, for information. How gracious our God is, so generous, so giving. He has given us everything, done all the heavy lifting of giving us life and salvation in him forever and ever. And we are attached to him through faith. Now with that strengthened connection of faith, rely on him all the more as you walk in those good works that he has prepared for you to do. Have a good week.